Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a fantasy adventure film, Fantastic Beast and where to find them. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the villain attacking other wizards. A series of newspaper clippings show that he is a dangerous wizard hellbent on spreading fear through his attacks, resulting in paranoia and distrust in the wizarding world. A zoologist wizard specializing in magical creatures arrives at Ellis Island in New York. Something inside his suitcase wiggles, and the customs guard asks him to open it. He flicks a switch on his suitcase before handing it over, so the guard wouldn't notice anything suspicious. The zoologist is cleared for entry. Somewhere in the city, an unknown creature wreaks havoc and destroys a building with its strong might. The zoologist notices a crowd gathered around a woman speaking in front of a bank about the dangers of the unknown creature stalking the city. Actually, she is a conspiracist who believes that witches and wizards walk among them. One of the creatures inside the zoologist's suitcase escapes and is drawn to the coins inside the bank. He follows it inside and sits down on a bench as he tries to see where the creature is going. Beside him is a baker who hopes to secure a loan from the bank. The zoologist spies the creature sliding inside a customer's bag and he stands up to chase it. But he doesn't notice that an egg has fallen out of his suitcase and onto the bench. The baker picks up the egg and puts it in his pocket. He proceeds to his appointment with one of the bankers, eager to get his loan for a bakery approved. While talking, the egg in the baker's pocket begins to hatch. He shows the banker a suitcase filled with his baked goods, but he isn't able to sway the banker to approve his proposal. Meanwhile, the creature hops on a cart filled with coins and disappears inside an elevator. The dismayed baker leaves the office holding the egg and informs the zoologist that it's hatching. The zoologist pulls out his wand and transports the two of them into a secluded staircase as a small creature emerges from the egg. The baker is astounded at the sight of it. The zoologist sees the creature go inside the vault and he opens it with a spell. However, the banker catches them and thinks that he and the baker are robbing the bank. The zoologist incapacitates him with another spell and the two escape with the creature. Outside the bank, the baker freaks out and leaves, but he picks up the zoologist's suitcase instead. A policewoman working for the magical law enforcement agency grabs the zoologist and arrests him for the illegal possession and release of magical creatures. She takes him down to the station for booking. Worried about the recent creature attacks, the president holds a meeting with the director of security. She emphasizes that it is imperative that they capture the creature because it threatens to expose the wizarding community to the humans. It turns out that they are the bosses of the policewoman who arrested the zoologist. The president is not happy to see her and she reprimands the policewoman for arresting the man because she was actually demoted from her position as a detective and so does not have the authority. Nevertheless, they open the suitcase, but discover that it's filled with baked goods. The baker arrives at his apartment and gets scared by the noises coming from the suitcase he had mistakenly grabbed. He opens it and accidentally releases the creatures inside it. On the other side of the city, the conspiracist from earlier gives a free meal to the street children. Her son assists her by handing out leaflets, warning people about the dangers of the witches. The policewoman and zoologist track down the baker's address, and they see that his apartment building has been wrecked. They quickly get to work modifying the memories of the people and fixing the building using magic. However, the two are too late, as the creatures are nowhere in sight. The conspiracist arrives at a prominent newspaper's office and meets with the newspaper owner and his senator's son. They are introduced by his other son. She tries to make them believe that witches exist and that they should run a story about them, but the owner dismisses their claims. Later, the policewoman takes the baker and the zoologist to the apartment she shares with her sister, a witch with a special ability to read minds. She takes an instant liking to the baker, who is also attracted to her. However, witches and wizards in the US are forbidden to have relations with non-magical humans. In a dark train station, the conspiracist's son covertly meets with the director. The director tasks him with finding a powerful child who he saw in his vision. This child is connected in some way to the conspiracist, so the son should gain the child's trust. If successful, the son will get his wish of being a full-fledged wizard granted. Back at the policewoman's apartment, the foursome enjoys a hearty meal. She lets the zoologist and the baker stay with them overnight. Later that night, the zoologist shows the baker that his suitcase is enchanted to hold an entire world full of magical creatures. The pair venture inside the suitcase, and the zoologist introduces him to a large bird-like creature. He shares that he rescued the bird from being trafficked in Egypt, and that the reason for him coming to the US was to return the bird to its birthplace. In fact, all of the creatures inside the suitcase are either endangered or rescued. It is the zoologist's mission to protect and help the wizarding world understand them. 
Afterward, the two decide to go out and round up the missing creatures, currently running around the city. The son arrives home, and faces his suspicious mother. The conspiracist is a stern and conservative woman, who treats her children rather coldly. As punishment for being out late, she beats him with a belt. The zoologist and the baker manage to capture one of the escaped creatures in a jewelry store. However, human cops arrive at the scene, and they are forced to flee. They find the next creature at the zoo, so the zoologist does a mating dance to lure the magical rhinoceros-looking creature back into the suitcase. On that same night, the senator gives a speech to his supporters. Suddenly, lights go out around the city. A dark entity attacks the senator and kills him. His father, the newspaper owner, is anguished. His other son becomes convinced that the conspiracist is right and witches are causing these attacks. The president and other heads of wizarding societies convene to discuss the magical attacks. The policewoman arrives and tries to explain that the zoologist smuggled the creatures into America, and some have escaped. She opens the suitcase, and the zoologist and the baker step out. The zoologist notices the floating hologram of the senator's dead body, and identifies the strange marks on the corpse as the work of an entity that latches on to magically gifted children and consumes them. The president comes to the conclusion that the attacks are being made by one of the zoologist's creatures, and so orders to arrest the zoologist, the baker, and the policewoman. Soon after, the three are thrown into jail. The zoologist further explains that the dark entity is manifested by children who are forced to repress their powers due to persecution. Unfortunately, these afflicted children do not live past the age of 10. He also shares that a few months ago, he had encountered an eight-year-old girl possessed by that dark entity. The zoologist is later taken to a room where he is questioned by the director. He accuses the zoologist of trying to cause a war between the wizarding and the human worlds, especially since he has a history of breaking the law. Furthermore, they also found the dark entity residing inside his suitcase. The zoologist explains that he captured that entity from the afflicted eight-year-old he had met and only wanted to study it. Despite his explanation, the policewoman and the zoologist are sentenced to death. They are taken to an execution room that uses people's memories to lure them to their death. The policewoman is up first, and her memories of the conspiracist and her son are played in front of them. Meanwhile, the policewoman's sister senses that she's in trouble. She stops the baker from being brainwashed and enlists his help in getting the two out of jail. During the rescue, they also grab the zoologist's suitcase on the way out. The conspiracist's son and the director meet again. He gives the young man a pin that he could touch when he has found the child they are looking for. The four regroup and decide that they need to capture the last remaining missing creature immediately, so the authorities would stop blaming them for the attacks. They go to a speakeasy to search for the policewoman's goblin informant who has experience with magical creatures. While waiting, the zoologist asks her how she knows the conspiracist and her son, since her memories of them were played during the botched execution. She reveals that she had gotten close to the conspiracist's son during her assignment to investigate the conspiracist's group, and she discovered that the conspiracist is beating him and her other adopted children. Enraged, the policewoman attacked the conspiracist, resulting in a huge mess that involved erasing the memories of dozens of people and costing her losing her job. Finally, the goblin arrives and demands that the zoologist give him one of his creatures in exchange for information on where the last escaped creature is. The zoologist reluctantly agrees, and the goblin tells them where to look for the creature. However, it is revealed that the goblin had betrayed them and tipped the authorities. They soon arrive and corner the group in the speakeasy, but they are able to escape. The son discovers a wand under his sister's bed. The conspiracist sees him holding it and assumes that it is his. She takes out the belt to punish him, but the dark entity manifests itself and kills the conspiracist and her other daughter in an instant. The group tracks down the last escaped creature in the department store and successfully returns it to the suitcase. The director is summoned by the pin of the conspiracist's son. He arrives at his home and sees the dead bodies. He finds the son sobbing in a corner and the director assumes that his remaining sister is the one afflicted by the entity. The son takes the director to an abandoned apartment where his sister used to live before she was adopted by the conspiracist. Before stepping into the room, the director cruelly tells the son that he does have magical ancestry, but he does not have any powers. The son retaliates by showing the director that he does have magic. In fact, he is the one afflicted by the entity, not his sister. It is unusual for an afflicted child to live beyond 10 years old, but his magic must be very strong to be able to sustain the entity for that long. The son fully transforms into the monstrous entity, and the zoologist sees the destruction it is making, and decides to save him. He finds the son hiding in a subway tunnel, and tries to comfort him. However, the director appears and attacks him with spells. Meanwhile, the destruction caused by the entity has become so large-scale that even humans have already noticed the strange occurrences. 
as the director and the zoologist fight, the policewoman tries to calm the son back into his human form. The president and other magical law enforcement teams arrive and attack the son, finally destroying the entity. The director is furious that his chances of controlling the entity are now gone. He reprimands the other wizards for being so scared of showing their true nature to the humans, when the wizards are far superior to them. He then suddenly whips out his wand, and attacks. One of the zoologist creatures subdues the director, and it is revealed that he is actually the villain, who's been terrorizing the wizarding world. He pretended to be the director, in order to enact his plans of instigating a war between the wizards and the humans. They arrest the villain subsequently. However, the wizards have already been exposed to humans. Luckily, the bird-like creature inside the zoologist's suitcase disperses a memory-erasing potion over the city. The wizards repair the damage caused by the fight, and the wizarding world is a secret all over again. The policewoman's sister kisses the baker goodbye, right before his memories are erased. The zoologist gifts the baker some valuable eggshells, so he can finally open his bakery. The policewoman is reinstated to her old job, and she bids farewell to the zoologist, who will be returning to England. Before he leaves, he promises her that he'll come back to give her a copy of the book he's writing, and a smelly tongue massage. The movie ends with the baker opening a successful bakery. His pastries resemble the magical beasts of the zoologist, meaning that he still has his old memories buried somewhere in his head, despite the effects of the potion. Finally, the policewoman's sister comes into his bakery, and smiles at him lustfully. At first, the baker is confused, but he gets the feeling that he must have known her. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.